Symbol is one of the core primitive types and a fundamental building block for some of the more modern features within JavaScript. We can create a symbol by simply invoking the built-in JavaScript symbol function. Every time we create a symbol, it is guaranteed to be unique, so alpha and beta over here are never going to be equal to one another. You can also pass in a string to the symbol function, and this doesn't actually change any of the equality semantics, so here uno and duo are still going to be different from one another, they are still going to be two distinct symbols. Only if we have an original reference to the symbol that we've created, will it be equal to itself? So a question that you might have is, what is the point of passing a string to a symbol if it's not going to make it any more or less unique? Well, it's really useful for debugging purposes. When we convert a symbol to a string, we can see the name that was passed in to create it. Notice that we said that symbol is a core primitive type within JavaScript, which means that it has its own result for the type of operator. Unlike some of the other built-ins that we have seen, it does not return an object, it returns its own special string, which is symbol. Beyond numbers and strings, symbols are the only other primitives that have first-class support to be used as an object property key within JavaScript. Here we are creating two symbols, both with a description of the string 1, but as we know, these are still two distinct symbols. We can use them as keys within objects by using the computed property syntax, and here 1 is going to point to alpha and uno is going to point to beta, and since they are unique, they are not going to conflict with one another, and this is different from other object properties. For example, here we have a property 1, and this will definitely conflict with some computed property that has the string value of 1. For example, here gamma is going to get overwritten by delta. So that's a really strong advantage of using symbols, because they are unique, they do not conflict with one another, and they do not conflict with any of the string properties. Keys demo symbol 1 is going to give us alpha, keys demo symbol uno is going to give us beta, and we can see that in the final object output, the string properties fought with one another and delta 1, whereas the symbol properties can peacefully coexist. Symbol keys within objects don't behave like standard string keys in that symbols offer a basic form of information hiding when it comes to enumeration. We start off with a simple symbol called gamma, and then we create an object that has a few identifier based properties, alpha and beta, and then the computed property for gamma. Of course, we can access the gamma property by using the gamma symbol, and of course, we get back the value which is the string gamma. But the gamma property does not show up in general iteration of the object. For example, if we use the object.keys method, we only see the string properties alpha and beta. Similarly, if we use the for in loop to loop over the keys of the object, we will only see alpha and beta, no sign of gamma anywhere. And if we try to serialize this object using JSON, since of course JSON does not support any keys other than strings, we will only see alpha and beta, no sign of gamma here either. So in summary, when you add a symbol to an object, it mostly remains hidden to standard JavaScript code unless you have a reference to that symbol. Because symbols are sort of hidden unless you have a reference to them and they don't conflict with existing object properties, you can use symbols to safely add properties to objects without worrying about that information leaking or mistakenly overriding existing properties. For example, here we have a very simple person object that has an ID and a name. And we want to store this in a database, so we assign a database ID to it as well. And we could do that with an ID, but it would conflict with whatever ID is there. So we can be smart and use a symbol to define that ID. And we don't actually even need to look at the person object. We know that the symbol is going to be unique every single time. So we are not going to conflict with whatever was already there. And as far as existing JavaScript code is concerned, it's going to be hidden from that as well. They will only see the existing properties, which were the old ID and the name. But if we have a reference to the symbol, of course, we can still read that value that we stored, which is 456. And someone can come along and add their own caching ID as well by using another symbol. And now the person object has the ID, has the DB ID and the caching ID, and they will not be conflicting with one another. Since symbols do not conflict with other properties, a modern JavaScript relies on well-known symbols to offer certain runtime features. This makes them easy to access without conflicting with existing object keys. The well-defined symbols exist as static properties on the symbol object, and one such example is the has instance symbol. To demonstrate how this is used internally, we create two simple classes, alpha and beta, and let's just create an instance of alpha. We've looked at the built-in instance of operator within JavaScript, and of course our alpha variable is an instance of the alpha class, so that will return true, but alpha instance of beta will return false. This actually internally uses the has instance symbol. If we access the has instance property on the alpha class, 
and pass in the alpha object that returns true and if we do the same thing with the beta class and pass in the alpha object it returns false and this is actually what is happening behind the scenes when we use the instance of operator. In fact let's override what the instance of does for a custom class. We create this class called ArrayLike and then we add a static member for symbol.has instance which will be a function that gets passed in an instance and then we return to if that instance is an array or it has a length property which is of type number. So if we use an array with an instance of array like array.isArray will return true and therefore we get back true. And similarly, if we do an object with a length property pointing to the number two instance of array like, the instance.length is of type number and therefore we get back true. But for anything else, if it's not an array or the length property is not of type number, we will get back false. And I'm not saying that you should do something like this. In fact, unless you are building a domain specific language, you probably shouldn't. But I wanted to demonstrate how instance of is completely controlled by a well-known symbol. If you need to share symbols but can pass a reference, for example, over browser iframes, then JavaScript provides a global symbol registry that enables you to obtain a reference to the same symbol for a given string value. We know that when we create two symbols with the same string, they are still completely unique. The string is only there for debugging purposes. But there is a special method on the symbol called for that does something different. Given a string, it checks if a symbol has been defined for that value in the global registry. And if it has, it returns that. Otherwise, it creates it and adds it to the registry. In this particular case, a new symbol for the string Spanish will be created and registered. So the next time someone calls symbol.forSpanish, they will get back the same reference. So uno will be equal to dos. It's still a real symbol. So if we create an object that uses it as a member, it will be hidden for most of JavaScript, for example, serialization and enumeration. And of course, we can still access that property if we have a reference to the symbol. But even if we don't have that reference because we couldn't pass it around or it was too difficult to pass it around, we can ask the registry for that reference by using symbol.for and we will get that reference to the symbol that we wanted and we can use it to read the property value. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next one.